Now that we've looked at foreign currency transactions, we need to look at foreign currency translations. These are much simpler to deal with. Effectively what you are doing is taking the statement of comprehensive income and statement of financial position of, say, an overseas subsidiary, and converting all the line items into the presentation currency of the group. Assets and liabilities are translated using the closing rate at the date of that statement of financial position. Income and expenses are translated using the exchange rates at the date of the transactions. Equity is... well, it isn't really discussed. But what we're going to do is look at how it generally gets dealt with in the example that we look at. What we have here is a simplified statement of comprehensive income, as well as information about the exchange rate at the start and at the end of the period, as well as the average rate. The first thing to do is to determine which exchange rate you use for which item. Now we ignore the totals here, so net profit before tax, net profit after tax, retained earnings close. In this case, the average rate gets used for sales revenue, expenses, and tax expensed. Whilst arguably you could identify the actual exchange rate for each individual sale and expense, realistically it's not that practical, and paragraph 40 allows you to use average rates. Retained earnings is an equity item and would generally use the open rate for the period. The second thing to do is to calculate the Aussie dollar amounts for each of these items and then total them. So sales revenue of 2850 becomes 2775 in Australian and expenses of 2540 in US becomes 2473 in Australian. This leaves a net profit before tax of 302. Now this is important. The 302 is calculated based on the translated amounts it isn't translated itself. This makes sense when we get to retained earnings close because it's comprised of line items using different translation rates. Sales, expenses and tax expense use the average rate, whilst retained earnings open uses the opening rate. For the statement of financial position, assets and liabilities use the closing rate. For equities, in a sense it doesn't matter because assets and liabilities are already defined using the closing rate, and as such the total amount of equity is also defined, and this is just the accounting equation at work. But we still have line items to deal with. The general convention here is that share capital is converted using the opening rate, whilst retained earnings is taken from the translated statement of comprehensive income. When we put all these rates in and translate them, we're left with a problem. This problem is that the sum of the translated liabilities and equities does not equal the sum of the translated assets. Now, accountants love a balance sheet to balance, even though we don't call it a balance sheet anymore. So paragraph 39C requires that all other exchange rate differences be recognized in OCI, which is why we have a foreign currency translation reserve of 172. This is simply the balancing item. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment.